name is Julian Noss from PandaDoc, and I will be giving you a interactive walkthrough of our integration with Sugar CRM, uh, as well as uh, a bit about our feature functionality for the app itself. So, um, let's dive right into it. PandaDoc uh, is generally used as a sales enablement platform, and what we do is we launch templatable documents out of objects in CRM. So, as this relates to Sugar, we're talking about contacts, opportunities, as well as accounts. Uh, today we're going to be demonstrating a sales workflow, so we're going to be mimicking a salesperson's day-to-day -day out of opportunities. Now the way that PandaDoc is usually used is as a bottom of sales funnel full enablement solution. And by that I mean I'm using my CRM to log my interactions with my clients, uh, to register leads, to hopefully convert them into opportunities. And as I move them along my sales funnel, it then becomes time to deliver a document or to uh, close the deal. Uh, this is what that uh, this is what PandaDoc is used for most frequently. So if I come here, the Catalina wine mixer, uh, we have our fake opportunity, we have our fake contacts associated with it, we have a line item, um, and PandaDoc appears as such as a window within the object, the opportunity Catalina wine mixer. Now this is a list of related documents associated only with this opportunity. So these are not all of the documents associated with the user account, these are only associated with this particular object, making it super easy for CRM users to stay organized and know what interactions they've had with their clients thus far. You'll notice some pretty easy to understand playback analytics on the status of these documents. These could additionally be viewed, completed, or up for approval. And what we're gonna do here, guys, is we're going to launch a template and data merge the information that we've already been putting into CRM into that template. So the whole purpose here is ease of use, save some time, and close deals more effectively. And the way that we're gonna do this is via the use of what we call tokens. And these are simple data merge areas, so wherever this is placed throughout the document template, the relevant information here is going to pull directly into that template. So we don't have to input any data twice. There's no fear of any typos. Everything is going to appear as it should based on the template. Now, if you guys elected to become a client or partner, depending on the use case here, uh, we would actually convert your documents into templates for you. So something to know as we're walking through this demo. So let's go ahead and create a new document. And remember that everything I'm showing you is happening out of sugar. I am being prompted here to select my template. I can have as many as I need. Different departments can have access to different templates. This platform is completely malleable. So any, any of those things you'd expect to be able to do by giving people access to different material is completely doable. These can be arranged however they need to be. And I'm gonna go ahead and select the template that I intend to use. Now, much like any other eSign provider, uh, we need to assign people to do the action items on the document. I'm going to assign myself as the sender. This simply means that I have to sign as well. Now, for the client, it could either be Silver Server or our good friend Tony Stark. These were both the fake opportunity contacts. So I simply assigned one of them to the eSign field. So upon receiving the document, they will be directed to sign where they need to in order to complete the use case. If I leave somebody here, they are CC'd. I can have as many signatories or as many people that need to take action on a document uh, that's completely configurable, completely possible. I have additionally set up a workflow to have operations take a look at this document as well. So being able to set up internal workflows is very easy to do too. Now let's jump into the editing phase here, guys. Beautiful, so welcome to PandaDoc. This document is in draft, okay? So keep an eye on this throughout the entirety of this process. The tokenized information pulled, this is gonna populate correctly once the document's actually sent. Everybody was assigned to the correct e-sign field. You can see it's pretty clearly outlined right here. So the sugar field name and the PandaDoc token that pulled over the corresponding information. We also pulled over the line item. Now this is made super simplistic on purpose, but all line items can pull if you guys want to do things that way. And we will get into pricing tables down the, down the road here. 
But off the bat, notice that this is a much more dynamic document than a PDF. Uh, we support high resolution graphics, videos, all types of content that are not available on a static document or a piece of paper, of course. And I think one of the biggest value adds here and one of the biggest differentiators between us and anybody else is that this is an HTML document. This is a web document. So this document lives and breathes. It can be edited. It can be changed post the data merge, post delivery to a client. So we're going to talk about that as we walk through this process and as we actually send a document and then pull it back and make edits to it. But before sending this to a client, what this means is if I am a salesperson, I can, I can launch a proposal skeleton and then make edits to the content after the fact based on the type of person that I am dealing with. All the types of content we support are right here. Fields, these are the additional action items that we support. So we are a legally binding eSign provider, but we do a lot of other stuff too. So I could send you a proposal, have you upload something into it, fill in your credit card information, tick a box, and then sign it, uh, whatever you need to do. All of this is pretty clearly outlined, and it's very easy to use. I simply pull in an action item, and then I assign it to a recipient. And that's it. Tokens we already discussed. This is the data merge. This is the data merge. Uh, these are the data merge fields that pulled in the information from Sugar. Now rolling right along here, you'll notice that I have a section here that just says case study. Okay, I need to uh, make sure that I put in a relevant case study every time I'm dealing with a particular type of client. So what am I going to do about this? I have a cloud repository of content. That, I in, that for intended reuse, that I drag and drop into the document much like any other piece of content. And this is that huge sales enablement piece. There's a stat that 30% uh, of a salesperson's time is spent trying to find content. This is a way to rearm your salespeople with marketing content at the bottom of the sales funnel. And this is huge for marketing consistency, for uh, messaging consistency, for any number of things. So if I come in here and I grab a relevant case study and I simply pull it in. It is that simple. Now pre-saved content can take any number of forms. Um, legal material, meet the team, uh, an entire pricing table that represents a service package or a retainer or a uh, pricing bundle or any number of things. So all we have, our clients are using this for all, uh, all types of stuff, uh, in addition to an image content library as well. Let's jump into pricing tables here, guys. So I had mentioned that you can data merge information from Sugar directly into a pricing table. That's, in fact, what we did with this line item, Big Boomer. But we additionally support a product catalog of our own. So if you guys... Um, or your clients are not investing in sugar this way. Uh, we support a product catalog as such. You just simply upload a CSV with products and pricing and it will populate for you. So I can come in here and I can grab a couple of these items. Now our pricing tables are completely flexible. Um, and by that I mean you can, you can play with them however you need to. Add, subtract columns, adjust currencies, decimal places, taxes, discounts, all this sort of stuff. All right, so completely flexible here for whatever the needs are. Everything here can be completely adjusted for whatever, however you guys like to present this, this type of information. And so that is that piece of it. Very easy to understand, very lightweight CPQ on purpose. So it'll do the math for you, but there's no sort of complex configuration or logic-based uh, activity here. Okay, so after I send the document, this is going to become even more apparent. But what I want to convey most of all is that this is a tool consolidator among a lot of other things. Pandadoc represents all of the things that a salesperson needs to get the job done. So... This is going to populate after I send the document. Remember, we are still in draft here. But 
What this is going to look like is you'll notice that I have the ability to collaborate and communicate with my recipients on the contents of the document all out of CRM. So I no longer have to track down email correspondences associated with the PDF that's somewhere else with no tracking on it. All of these things are consolidated to one place and a full audit and action trail available to the sender. Now for recipients, I can either set up a workflow per template. I need every uh, proposal to go through our CEO. I need every SOW to go through somebody else, uh, whatever the situation is. Um, I can additionally set up signing orders per document. So um, for, for whatever quick reason I need Silver Surfer to sign before me, it's all done this way. Um, and things are toggled on and off in Pandadoc quite frequently, so it makes it very easy to understand, very easy to navigate the UI here. Document forwarding and signature authority forwarding. This is something that's very unique to a web document. I can allow my recipients to uh, forward on these documents to somebody else as well as their signature rights. Now, because these are toggled on, that's going to be available, but also as the sender, I'll receive a notification every time something happens. So this is very frequent in sales. I deliver a proposal to somebody. It turns out that there are additional people that need, that need to weigh in in order for something to get done or the your contact is out of town, what have you. Uh, this allows things to get done a lot faster by allowing people to forward on their signature rights to those who need to execute the doc. Designs are completely adjustable too. You'll notice we made this document pretty slick. This is just for, doc for demo purposes, but imagine your own documents actually being on the screen right now. But we do support some pretty cool custom themes, uh, default themes rather, as well as the ability to customize your themes with CSS if you'd like to do so. And remember that a lot of people will adopt this platform to completely revamp their document, uh, their client-facing documentation. So beyond all the bells and whistles here, this also just makes your client-facing material much more appealing to your recipients, which does have a huge impact on close rates. Okay, so let's go ahead and assume that I have the, the correct products and pricing. Everybody was assigned to the correct thing in order to complete the use case here. It's got all the right material in it the right case study, and now it's time to send the document. So I go ahead and I send it. Remember that this is delivered in the form of an embedded web link in an email, which allows us to do a lot of the cool tracking things that we're going to get into in a second, and is also what makes us a legally binding eSign provider. Okay. So now that I've sent the document, you'll notice that it went from being in draft to being sent, and this does play back to Sugar CRM. So you'd be able to see this out of the opportunity that we're working out of. I've opened up a whole other group of doors here, guys. So you'll notice as we walk through some of these things, that this gets really pretty robust. But off the, off the cuff here, I'm being directed to where I need to complete my action item in order to move this document forward in its signing order. Uh, we are a legally binding eSign provider, but I hope you'll notice, you've noticed by now that we do a lot more than that. Um, I have the ability to uh, choose how I want to execute my signature. This is a pre-saved signature that I built, that I uh, drew on an iPad. So as a Silicon Valley SaaS platform, we are, of course, mobile friendly. Um, and I go ahead and I accept and sign. And now this document will move forward here. Beautiful. So commentary appears here as such, which means that me and my recipients have the ability to communicate on the document out of sugar. If oh, as, the, as a Pandadoc user, I have all of my stuff consolidated to one place. I also have a full audit and action trail on what's going on. Why is my document hung up? It's the end of the quarter. It's the end of the month. Why hasn't this been signed? Who do I need to follow up with to push this forward? If there is a need, I can send a reminder. This will kick it to the top of the recipient's inbox. You can set auto reminders. You can set expiration dates on, on documents that are sent out. Analytics, and this is where things get very serious. Um, we're gonna give you a page-by-page -page breakdown of what your recipient's interaction with the material is. Why is this person telling me that they're ready to sign when they haven't opened the document yet? 
Why is this person staring at my pricing table? Why is none of my marketing material working? No one is taking the time to, to, to read it. You can run reports within the application of who is looking at what and what material is being looked at the most. So a page-by-page -page breakdown of what the engagement with the material is. Time spent, time is viewed, uh, was it downloaded? Now, know that if a document is downloaded, the analytics disappear. We can't track something if it's offline. But that allows you really to address your clients and your prospects' objections intelligently before they even happen. Alrighty, so let's suppose I've delivered this document and my, me and my recipient are communicating back and forth on the contents of the document itself. And there's a request for an edit. It happens all the time. And it tends to happen at the end of the quarter, or at the end of the month, whenever, whenever time matters most. So what we've done is we've made things a lot easier. And this is only available because this is a web document. This is not available anywhere else. So I, as a Pandadoc user, if there is a request for an edit, can edit the document. I can pull this document out of the recipient's inbox. If they attempted to access it during, uh, during this time, it would say this document's up for edit and you do not have permission to access it. I pull it back. You'll notice it goes from being sent to being back in draft. I can now come and I can make the change that was requested by the client. And I go ahead and I shoot it off again. Now, as we are a as this is a legal document, of course we have to kick off the signing process again. But a couple clicks and we're good. I don't have to track down the PDF somewhere, download it to Word doc, make the edit, re-upload it, attach e-sign fields to it, and then send it with no tracking. All of this is being done from one place. And remember, we are in Sugar CRM. We're keeping track of the versions for you too. And all of this is happening out of Sugar. Now, the data is being stored in our cloud, but it's, we have full application capability out of Sugar CRM. So you're not paying for any additional Sugar storage, but you get to be able to do all of these things. Thanks, guys. I hope that that was helpful. Um, let me know if you have any questions. My name, again, is Julian Noss from Pandadoc.